Hi, my name is Brennan Waters, and for the EngineConf 100 Programming Contest, I've designed and implemented an engineering calculator. I chose this program primarily to give students an additional resource to help them the coursework, as well as to personally broaden my understanding of MATLAB. Uh, just a brief overview of the program. Uh, its primary features are graph graphing in two and three dimensions. That includes implicit and explicit equations, as well as parametric and polar curves. It can also do an extensive list of calculus computations, such as derivatives, integrals, arc lengths, and limits. And finally, it has an intuitive user input and error messaging system, which we'll get into later. Now let's discuss the timeline briefly. So I began in late January with the initial testing and timeline planning, as well as creating a list of goals I wish to accomplish with the program. By February 16th, I had completed the user input system and the application interface, as well as the basic two-dimensional graphing. By March 10th, I had completed all the calculus functionality, and with the rem remainder of March devoted to bug testing, minor code improvements, and working on the video. Uh, now I'll just discuss the version history. This is available on the main menu of my application. So first I'll start with version 0.0.5. Uh, as you can see, it's just the bare bones graphing functionality, only in two dimensions. Uh, it lacks a help screen and a main menu, and it only has two calculus features at this point. Next is version 0.1.6 at the end of February. Uh, as you can see on the left, the graphing is much more advanced. Um, it's completed in 2D, but still not 3D. There's a new basic menu, and then there's additional calculus features. And then finally, the current version uh, that we're on, we have a fully functioning 2D and gra 3D graphing system, a complete help screen and a main menu, extensive list of calculus features, and improved user interface. So now I'll just briefly discuss one of the files I have selected to talk about and go through some of the code. Now for this part of the presentation, I'll just briefly be discussing the graph write function, which is primarily responsible for converting user input in two dimensions to something that MATLAB can work with. Before I do that, I'd just like to mention that all the functions on the left-hand side of the screen were entirely designed and implemented by myself, excluding three. Two of them are responsible for plotting an XY-axis system, and the other is responsible for coloring in three dimensions. So now that that's out of the way, I'll just go through the code. So when a user inputs a function to be graphed in two dimensions, it's passed through this, first of all, this long list of uh, predefined mathematical functions in MATLAB. Uh, there's trigonometric, calculus-related functions, there's things like pi, which are a little bit more complex and require some additional parsing to be used properly. After it's passed through this list of functions, it comes to this if block. This if block is responsible for checking to see if you're using e or e to the x, for example, and it allows you to use e instead of typing in the exponential function. After that, it checks to see if you're using the variable theta, and if you are, it will treat the variable just as any other variable, such as x or y, to be used in an equation. And then after that, it comes to the final part of the file. This part checks for any constants, variables, or arithmetic operators, such as addition or multiplication. If it finds one of those, it will automatically add in the proper period so that you can type in something that you would write normally on a piece of paper. Now I'll just briefly discuss how graphing works. So the first part of the file is devoted to setting up the GUI and getting the axes created. Um, when a user inputs a function, it's sent to the input callback. Uh, once it's retrieved from the text box, it'll be sent to the graph write function to be cleaned up so that MATLAB can use it. After it's cleaned up, it's sent back here and the uh, program will check to see what type of graphing they want to do, if it's implicit or parametric or polar, and depending on which type of graph they want to input, the program will try to graph that function and change the axis bounds depending on if the user has specified custom options for the graph. For this part of the video, I'll just be providing a brief demonstration of my application. This is the main menu. On the right side, you have some of the options. Uh, we have a help menu. It has an extensive list of instructions and help available if you need it. Uh, at the bottom, we have a change log, which uh, details all the updates I have provided. And to start, we're just going to go ahead and do some two-dimensional graphing. And to showcase some of the two-dimensional graphing features, I'm just going to show a few examples. First, I'm just going to graph x cubed minus xy equals y squared. So we get that curve. Next, I'm going to show the parametric curve of that, which we get that. And lastly, I'm going to be demonstrating the polar curve, sine of 2 theta squared which we get that, and if we go in the options, we are able to adjust all the values for the x, y axis. In addition to graphing in two dimensions, the application can graph in three dimensions. So this is a quick example. I'm going to graph that function, which is a torus, and I'm just going to change the bounds so we can see a little better. There we go. So as you can see, this is the torus. We are able to rotate it around in three dimensions. We can zoom in and out. We can move it around, stuff like that, just to make it a little bit easier to see. And lastly, for the demonstration, I'm just going to be demonstrating one of the calculus features. I'll be doing the series test, so there's just a brief disclaimer there at the bottom. I'm going to be doing 1 over ln of n squared from 2 to infinity, which should be divergent, which is what we get, and then 1 over n cubed, which should be convergent, which is also what we get. 
Thank you for your time and interest, and thank you for allowing me to participate in this contest.